Okay, we're going to take a look at some uh, blade cores that have ground platforms. And some of these will have pectin ground platforms, and we'll go into that. Made about uh, 20 of these, I guess, now where I've hand ground the proximal end, the platform, on a matati in order to uh, get it real flat and to break up the surface tension. And uh, that works really well. The Mesoamericans, most of the cores, from what I understand, they were ground and a lot of them were pecked in ground. The difference is that this is the way I was doing them in my earlier videos here where I had a multifaceted platform and then I was having to make a special isolated platform for every single blade removal and that involved removing a little flake off the top. When you have a ground platform you really don't have to do that and uh, we'll take a, a close-up look here at one here just a okay here's a couple of close-ups of the platform and you can see that it's pretty well perfectly flat and that's what you want and this grinding it breaks up the surface tension and uh, allows the crack to start a lot easier now you can also peck them with a, uh, a chert cobbler or a chert flake and you'll get a different texture that works even better and we'll go into that this is the matati that I'm using to grind these and we'll give a demonstration of that here in a few minutes. Uh, this is the chert flakes, thin little chert flakes, waste flakes, gravel, basically. I use that, bust it up with this little hammer stone right here, real good hard hammer stone on this matati, and it gives you a real good uh, mixture. I use a little bit of dirt to kind of give it a carrying medium so that uh, it doesn't squeeze out from underneath the, the rock when you're grinding it. Okay, these five over here show pectin ground platforms. They've actually been pecked using a chert flake like this. It takes about 10 or 15 minutes to completely peck that surface until you get it really, really rough. You know, what you'll notice on here are actually small Hertzian cones, and they go in about a millimeter or so. I wet this down with water and looked at them with a uh, magnifying glass, and you can actually see the fractures going down into the stone and what that does is the crack has already started and so as a result of that when you're pushing down with your chest crutch the uh, flake will remove with a lot less force. Here's another example this one here has been worked a little bit and uh, I've had well, a couple sets of blade removals already taken on here so you know it's good to go it's pretty well stabilized. It looks kind of like a sprocket like on a motorcycle each one of these platforms still needs to be isolated on the side, on either side of the ridge that you intend to follow. But you don't need to isolate the top like you do with a multifaceted platform. So you get a real consistent edge angle every time so you can kind of, you know, remove your blades one at a time, one after another, and that works out real good. Okay, over here on the left we have a blade core. And on the right, we have uh, 13 blades that I glued back together. They came off one at a time, so I just laid them out in order and then uh, glued them back together after I was done. The reason I'm showing this, take a look at the platforms, and you'll notice that in between the platforms on the blades that have been removed, you'll see voids there. Those voids represent isolation of each one of these blades before they were actually removed. And I'm going to show you a picture of a real one that's been reassembled from Italy, and you'll see the comparison. Okay, this is a picture a friend from Italy sent me this. And these are some actual blades that were found in Italy, and he reassembled them. And if you notice in between the platforms, which are obviously ground, they're perfectly flat, you can see these spaces in here. And that represents where each one of these was individually isolated prior to the uh, blade removal. We'll take another look at it. Here's another shot showing the underside. Notice how straight these blades are. In my opinion these were almost surely removed with pressure and yet they're made from chert and uh, removing blades of that size with uh, pressure on chert, especially if it was unheated, it must have been quite a task. I don't know if they could have done that with a chest crutch or not, but probably. 
I hope to look into that here later on after I get done uh, with my experimentation with obsidian and dacite. Here's one last shot. You can see these areas right in here on either side of the platform. Again, these are isolation flakes. Help it release better. Okay, we've got three cores here and uh, they're all set up to be ground. And I'd like to take a look at the uh, platforms. They're multifaceted, meaning that the uh, percussion flakes were driven off from the edge here toward the center of the top. And uh, what I try and do here is to get it actually deeper, actually bowl shaped. So this is kind of low right down in here. And you'll see that on all three of these. And uh, these are just percussion cores. I haven't really done any indirect percussion on them. I find that it's really not necessary if you're going to be grinding these things because you get such good results with the grinding. This is the core here that I'm going to take. And uh, we'll grind it over here. And I'll set up the tripod and, and time it and kind of do a little demonstration on exactly how I've been doing that. Okay, one more comment about this platform. If you don't have this hollowed out and bowl shaped in here, if you have it kind of domed over, what will happen is after you get done grinding it, you'll still have it kind of domed over. And uh, it's better to have a, a really flat platform when you get done with this thing. Or even a little bit of convection in here won't matter because you're not going to be removing flakes from the very center anyway. So to get started, I use a little bit of sand like this, sand and gravel. Put it in here, and this is just a matrix to kind of hold everything together. By the way, this is a piece of basalt, I believe. I found this out in the desert, and uh, it's really porous. I like that because it holds the particles in place on these little holes right here. It won't squish out as much as if you use a really smooth sandstone. Put that in there. Add some flakes, chert flakes. I like really thin ones. I save the really thin ones for pressure flaking. Add a little bit of water just to kind of keep it from uh, keep the flakes from jumping out of the middle of this thing. Take your little hammer stone here. Pretty simple. You just want to bust up these flakes until they're pretty small, maybe a sixteenth, eighth of an inch big, something like that. These things will get ground down to a really fine pottery kind of a texture by the time it's done. This is more than enough to completely grind this platform all the way. to have kind of the consistency of oatmeal. If it's too watery, it'll just run off the end of the, uh, the grinding. Another good advantage of having this hollowed out is that it will keep the uh, flip flakes in the middle here as you're grinding it in a circular motion here. I'm just going to grind this for a few minutes and then we're going